Hello friends, welcome to another video of Zeta Axis and today we will discuss different types of rainfalls. So basically, based on the mechanism of rainfall, we can classify the rainfall in three different types. The first is convectional rain, the second is orographic rainfall and the third one is cyclonic or frontal rainfall. We will see each of these rainfalls one by one and try to understand exact mechanism for these rainfalls. Now the first is convectional rainfall. So before going into convectional rainfall, let's try to understand what the word convection means. Here we can see a utensil which is having water and this utensil is heated using a flame. Now this flame will transfer heat to this metal of this utensil and the water which is in contact with this metal will get heated. This heated water rises up. It releases the energy to the above fluid or above liquid over here as well as towards the atmosphere. So we see that heat is transferred from here to the atmosphere or to the liquids which are in the upper part of the utensil by the fluids which are getting heated. So there is actual transport of fluid over here. And this mechanism of transfer of heat is called convection. This fluid which releases heat to the water over here as well as to the atmosphere will cool down. And once it cools down, it will again sink back and this process continues. So this is called convection cell. A very similar mechanism occurs in convectional rainfall. The sun right from the morning releases its energy in the form of salt waves which is absorbed by the land. This land continues to absorb the radiation from the sun throughout the day and by noon it gets heated. And because of this heat, the air which is lying in contact with this land also gets heated. Now heated air has higher buoyancy, therefore this air will start to rise up with very high velocity. Now if this air has some moisture, then that moisture will start to adiabatically cool. And when it reaches the upper atmosphere where it is sufficiently cooled, it will form clouds and we will see that rainfall starts by the time of evening. So this is the whole process of convectional rainfall we have seen, that because of the heated land, the air in contact with the land gets heated and this air rises up if there is any moisture it will form clouds and give rainfall to that region. So this is what convectional rainfall mechanism is. The convectional rainfall can occur only in those areas where there is sufficient sunlight to heat the land and cause the process of convection. So we see that near the equator in the tropical region there is sufficient sunlight to initiate the process of convection. But we know that the sun continuously moves its location over our earth. Because the earth revolves around the sun at an inclined axis, the region of earth which is directly under the sun varies. So we see that this region where the convectional rain occurs also varies. If we want to see in more refined way, then we can see that there is an ITCG where the tropical winds from both the hemisphere meets. So this is the region where convectional rain mainly occurs and you can see that this is not a straight line but it is curved based on the hemisphere as well as the landforms below it. The second type of rainfall is orographic rainfall. Now in geography, orography is related to study of mountain formation. It could be fold mountains or it could be block mountains. So in short, orography is related to the process of mountain building. Now before discussing further about orographic rainfall, let's try to understand what is adiabatic heating and adiabatic cooling. Here we can see that there is a vessel which has a constant volume and we are constantly putting more and more gas in it. So as we increase the amount of gas, we will see that the pressure will increase. But with the increase in pressure, we will also see that there is increase in temperature. Now remember, we are not heating this gas or we are not providing any other source of heat to this utensil. So the temperature increases merely because the pressure has increased. So this kind of process is called adiabatic heating where there is no external source of temperature but the pressure change or the volume change may cause increase or decrease in temperature. Similarly, if we start to remove gas from this vessel at a very high speed, then we will see that the pressure will decrease and along with it, the temperature will decrease. So this process is called adiabatic cooling because here we are not cooling this gas directly. We are just changing the pressure or in some other cases we are changing the volume 
and because of the change in pressure or volume there will be a resultant change in temperature so here it is called adiabatic cooling because pressure is decreasing and temperature is also decreasing along with pressure now we know that in our atmosphere the pressure constantly decreases as we move vertically up in the atmosphere we can see that there is a uniform decrease in the pressure if we consider this mountain range then we will see that at the base of this mountain range the pressure will be p1 and at the peak of this mountain range the pressure will be p2 but we have just seen that the pressure uniformly decreases as we go up in the atmosphere therefore p1 is greater than p2 therefore the pressure over here is higher compared to the pressure over here so if we consider a block of air mass which is over here and when this block of air mass rises up we will see that its temperature will decrease because the pressure has decreased so we have seen that there is an adiabatic cooling now similarly on the other side of mountain when this air block moves from this top to the bottom we will see that this air block is heated because the pressure increases as this air block moves from here to here so this process is called adiabatic heating and this process is very important to understand orographic rainfall so here we can see that wind is flowing and it is rising above the mountain range and then going over the other side this wind is flowing over the sea therefore it collects a lot of moisture and therefore we see that there is formation of clouds in it but as these clouds rise up this mountain we see that it is adiabatically cooled because the pressure decreases and as the pressure decreases temperature also decreases we have seen it earlier so because of this cooling these clouds will start to give a lot of rain over here now as these clouds move further they cross this mountain and they reach over here and descend the mountain we will see that these clouds are adiabatically heated because the pressure over here is lower the pressure over here is higher they are moving from a lower pressure region to higher pressure region and therefore the temperature also increases and because of this increase in temperature these clouds will not give any rainfall in this region this side of the mountain which receives the wind directly is called windward side and it receives lot of rainfall while the other side where these air descends is called leeward side or rain, rain shadow region the reason why it is called rain shadow region because there is very little rainfall over here because the descending air is adiabatically heated and we know that when air is heated it will not give rainfall to that region we see in our monsoon rainfalls that western ghat obstructs the monsoon winds and because of this we see lot of cloud formation on the western side of our western ghats while on the eastern side of western ghats there is very less rainfall because the descending air is adiabatically heated the next type of rainfall is cyclonic or frontal rainfall now cyclonic rainfall is caused by cyclonic air flow any air flow which is moving in a circular direction around a low pressure area is called cyclonic air flow we see that this cyclonic air flow can be related to tropical cyclones or extra tropical cyclones here we see a tropical cyclone the air is converging around this low pressure region and rising up when it rises up it will give rain here we can see that there are many bands of this tropical cyclone the air rises up in these bands and it gives rains to their respective regions so the rainfall which occurs in tropical cyclone can be called a cyclonic rainfall similarly in extra tropical cyclone we see that there is a low pressure region over here and the cold air as well as warm air moves around it this is also a kind of circular motion if you see and we see that there is rainfall in these frontal regions so this kind of rainfall can also be called cyclonic rainfall they can also be called frontal rainfall because there are two types of air masses over here and this is the boundary of these air masses where we are seeing this rainfall this type of rainfalls can occur without cyclonic air flow we can see here that there is a warm front there is a cold air mass and there is a warm air mass this warm air mass is trying to move towards the cold air mass now this warm air mass 
when it is trying to push this cold air mass it rises up clouds are formed and rainfall occurs now here there is no cyclonic airflow therefore these kind of rainfalls is called frontal rainfall similar mechanism occurs at cold front here we see that cold air mass is trying to move forward and it is causing rain in the frontal region and therefore this kind of air is called frontal rainfall so both of this cyclonic as well as frontal rainfall is classified under one mechanism if we see this diagram then we can see that tropical cyclone is restricted to these regions that is a tropical region somewhere around 0 to 20 to 30 degree while the extra tropical cyclone is confined to these regions that is from 30 to 40 degree to 60 to 70 degree in both hemispheres i hope this video was helpful in clarifying different types of rainfall if you have any doubt then you can leave it in the comment or ask us on twitter if you have liked the video then please press the bell icon and subscribe to our channel and please do not forget to share this video with your friends thank you